and welcome to episode 4 of The Wolf Among Us in Sheep's Clothing. Finally came out. About time, right? Anyway, we're just gonna jump right into it. Give the video some likes, add it to your favorites, all that good stuff. By now, you guys should know the drill. Anyway, let's do this. If you can't afford to look human, you're going to the farm. It's as simple as that. Do you have any idea how much it costs to have an entire family in glamour? I can't finish the mirror. It's missing a piece. Crane must have taken a shard with him. The open arms. Enjoy your stay. If you had just waited for me to explain before telling Beast. Big B? How could you do this to me? I guess I finally see you for who you are! Tell me who did it! Just tell me who did it! I know you know! I don't think he did it. What? Look at him. Do you really think this man murdered these women? Big bad wolf. It was a good show, but you know. Just take him, okay? Take Crane. Well, this is going to be a beautiful relationship we have with you guys. Really, I mean it. Out with the old, in with the new. Long live the queen. So, episode 3, man, was real good. I'm hoping episode 4 is just as strong. I mean, it's Telltale. It's got to be pretty good, right? Look at all the blood. See you around. Point bullets are a nasty business. The silver slug deformed and shredded on impact. He'll be okay, though. Hmm? He'll be okay? His internal organs are positively riddled. He's if fine. I don't extract every single scrap of silver. He's liable to suffer some long term toxicosis. Easy there. Try not to move. Did he just spit on Snow White? <laughs> we can't keep needing this way, old boy. I figured I'd be done before you were conscious. But there's little I can do for the pain. Just stay still and let me finish. My arm. <laughs> yes, very ugly. But not life-threatening. I can't say the same for these bullets peppered throughout your vital organs. Please, Somebody baby, fix don't that. Move it. Doctor. Look, I'm a bit engaged saving his life at the moment. But if the fractured extremity concerns him that much, he can set it himself. Ah, oh, let's do it. How bad do you think it's going to be? Oh, imagine you got to do this yourself. Ah, da! <laughs> didn't even feel it. This is what you call not a good look. Yep, definitely would have passed out. <laughs> hmm, not bad. That'll do, I suppose. He's lucky to be alive. And he won't be next time if he keeps going like this. He didn't listen to me before. Maybe he'll listen to you. I don't know about that. Well, he should. There are limits to what even I can do. You know, I can't hear you. Quiet. Just relax. <laughs> Excuse me, Miss White, but perhaps it'd be better if you gave me a few minutes to finish with him. I, I think I should stay, at least until he's out of the woods. Believe me, Bigby couldn't <laughs> be in better hands, and I need the space to work, so if you wouldn't mind... We'd appreciate the headroom. Don't leave me snow. Around, all right? I don't know if I trust this guy. Oh, please. I could do this with my optic nerves severed. We'll be down in a moment. Just please, give us the time. 
and she leaves me anyway. Hey, Doc, how much longer? Colin, leave him be. It's finished when it's finished. Wait, which pig was I Colin once again? Because I watched a vet sew a turtle together in ten minutes flat. Colin, you're not even supposed to be here right now. Oh, really? Where am I supposed to be? I'm here to take care of my friend. W with what? Your hooves? Hey, listen, please, lady. Please, keep it down back there. Thank you. Could you please not distract the doctor while he has my chest cut open? Yes, that would be helpful. <sighs> there. All done. Great. This isn't a habit you should keep to, having visits with me. And, well, this time... This time was no joke. Eat as many metal shellings as you see fit, but take just one more silver round near your heart, and the only place I'll be visiting you is the morgue. Miss White. He'll be fine for light duty, if he can figure out what that means. He knows what it means. It's just been... an unusual couple of days. I know, but please, don't give him the excuse. His body will eventually give out. Take care of him. Please. I will. He'll need rest, I assume? Sleep, mostly. Just keep watch, and make sure he doesn't get into further altercations. I don't need a babysitter. I can look after myself. Goddamn right. Clearly. Anyways, guard against, as they say. Miss White? Sheriff? Colin? Swiney? <laughs> The irony in the dialogue, right? So, how do you, um, feel? It's Bigby, Snow. He'll be okay. Hell, I've seen him take worse. Not much worse. Not as good as can be expected, I think. So, not well, then. I'm glad you're not dead. You, uh... You stopped breathing, you know? When you passed out, or... Or... Died, I guess? It... Um... It kind of scared the hell out of me. I've never seen you like that. And when Swineheart arrived... You know him, he's never worried, and even he thought you were... I don't know. It was just... awful. Cue porn so, music. I'd never leave you. Yeah, you were really fucked up, man. You look like when you take an action figure and bend its limbs the wrong way. Colin... I'm just saying, I was worried about him is all. The guy hasn't had a night's rest in days. Well, I'll get some rest when this whole thing is done. What whole thing? What's even happening out there? I mean, do you guys have like a plan or something? And who should I be asking? Should I be worried about the crooked man taking over? Or is Crane still the thing? I think we'll go off Snow's, Snow's judgment. She'll know what's best for the community. Thanks. The crooked man came out of the shadows for a reason. For him to attack us so blatantly like that. He either feels invincible or desperate. Well, if those are my two options, I don't think I'd pick desperate. What do you mean? You traded Crane to save Bigby. I'm just saying, that's not exactly something you do when you're playing with house money. So he called my bluff. It's not like I'm gonna let Bloody Mary just murder... It was a split-second decision, and I don't care how it looked. I'd make it again and twice on Sunday. All right, I'm not faulting you. Yeah, uh, thanks, Snow, for all that back there. No problem. Thanks? You're not pissed that Crane's flown the coop? Or that the crooked man thinks he's got snow under his thumb? We're all mad about it, Colin. But it's not like we had a strong choice in the matter. You weren't there, Colin. So just drop it. Yeah, shut okay, up, pig. Okay, okay. All I care about right now is... Just what does the crooked man want out of this? I thought he was just a loan shark, but clearly he's operating in other circles. It can't just be about Crane, right? Getting him out of town? 
Is this all about the murders? Crane can't be useful to him anymore. So what could this have to do with Faith and Lily? How long has this stuff been going on? Crane was a puppet, and the Crooked Man worked the strings. This is all about control of Fabled Town. But then what do prostitutes have to do with it? Lily? And Faith? I don't know how it all works out yet, but I know it does. Somehow. The Crooked Man declared war against us last night. At least that's what I thought when it happened. But now I see this war has been going on for years. We just haven't noticed it because our way of doing things is broken. We need to do things the right way. What does that mean, the right way? What do you think I mean? I don't know, but it suspiciously sounds like your way. Bigby's the one on the front lines. You can't give him a leash. He doesn't work that way. A little restraint and thought behind things will never hurt anyone, Colin. I can only do things the way I do them. And where has that left us so far? Excuse me, but it's left us with a name. Maybe the name, the Crooked Man. That's not good enough. So, starting now, we do everything cut and dried, by the book, straight as an arrow. Pure as driven snow. I'm not saying I'm the arbiter of- Sure you're not. This town has enough monsters. What happened last night, what you turned into, it can't happen again. We need monsters. I hope it the happens again. Monsters. Colin, if I really believed that we needed him to lose his flippin' mind at a moment's notice, then that would mean I'd lost all faith in our ability to help this town. Just let that side of you be done, okay? Be done and buried and we can all move on. I'm sure from your vantage point it's extraordinarily easy to judge me. Big B. But you sit behind a desk all day. Only tonight did you see what it's like to be pushed into a corner all the time just for doing your job. You think I don't know what it's like to have my life in danger? To not be pushed to do things? I know what it's like. And I know what it's like to lie to yourself. To justify what you've done. What has she don't done? Don't talk to me like I'm other people. Look, Bigby, I care about how this is done just as much as I care about it getting done. So for that, you want to give him a handicap? Like the bad guys will worry if shit gets sloppy. Everybody wants Bigby to smile and shave and take a shower now and then. Hell, I'm practically the president of the Bigby Don't Be Such a Dick Club. But this is the wrong fucking time to put shackles on him. Shut up, Colin. I can speak for myself, okay? He'll get the job done. Just let him do it. I'm going to... I'm going to let you do it, okay? It's just that... Now that I'm Deputy Mayor, I need your respect. And this situation has to end. What situation? All unglamored fables starting today have to go and stay at the farm. Oh, give me a fucking break. <laughs> Are you gonna let her talk to me like that? It's been the rule for a reason, Colin. And Bigby knows it's for the best of the town. It keeps everybody out of trouble. And what if a Mundy does see me, huh? I'm a pig, not a mouse with a hat and a cane. They know what a pig is. It's not the end of the world. Look, everyone just calm down, all right? I'm perfectly calm. I'm not. Tell me right now. What's it gonna be, Bigby? God damn it. Why must I choose? Maybe they won't. Maybe I won't have to. Wolf's residence. That's rude. Oh, Buffkin, what is it? Okay. I'll let him know. Thanks. Guess who's waiting in your office right now? Nerissa. Nerissa? That broad from the pudding and pie? Yes. Apparently, she told Buffkin that she has something she needs to talk to you about. But that she'll only tell you. What do you think that could be? Uh, Bigby's got an admirer. You always do well with the, uh, disenfranchised. Something about your prickly demeanor attracts him like a moth to a flame. <laughs> she knows something. She's helped me a little with the case. Maybe she has something else. Maybe she does. I should get back to the business office. I've left Buffkin alone for too long taking calls. And I should probably change out of these clothes. Definitely should. Consider the discussion tabled, but not over. Let me know when you're done with Nerissa. 
Aye, aye, Captain. She's a piece of work. Hey, you're not really gonna send me to the farm, are you? I mean, she seemed real serious about it, but I can still hang out here, right? I don't know. Snow come around, she's just... You know, the crane thing hit her hard, and she doesn't really know who her friends are right now. Oh, okay. I get it. Don't worry about it. Thanks, Bigby. Colin definitely doesn't get it. He's like, I don't want to go to the fucking farm. And here's the intro. I feel like they could have led into the opening, like, intro a little bit better on this episode. Or maybe it was just because last episode was much better. I don't know. Whatever. Still good. So are you guys excited about this episode? Because I am. I'm definitely going to try pumping this out as soon as possible, considering it's only like... What do you call it? going to be like, what, an hour and a half, two at most? 